My name is Hannah, and this is my No Buy Year. I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but this sweater is covered in cat hair. I was so excited when I pulled it out of my drawer because it's something that I had kind of forgotten about that I really, really love. Like, I can't imagine anything better. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but it has these, like, ruffles, editorial ruffles, one of my favorite things in fashion, here on the arms. And I got it at H&M a really long time ago. I believe it's either 100% cotton or mostly cotton. Yeah, it's a, it's a cotton blend. So it's a viscose cotton blend, but both of those are breathable natural fibers, which is what I prefer. And I like it because it's warm, but it's not too hot. It's not as hot as wool, so that's perfect for the LA weather. Why am I talking so much about this sweater? It's not even the topic of the video. I cannot be stopped. Anyway, I'm sure as I can be that Sadie has been sneaking into my sweater drawer and sleeping violently and assiduously on this sweater all summer long. And I pulled it out and it was like... But I couldn't get all the little hairs off. We have all of our lint rollers are down at the studio. We don't have a lint roller in the house right now. I'm going to go ahead and get into the meat of the video because I don't think I need to give much of an introduction for this one. You know what it is, you clicked on it. I'm going to tell you what's on my actual shopping list for 2019, now in the final month of my year-long no-buy. So the meat of this video actually has two parts. Before I get into telling you what is actually concretely on my shopping list for next year, I wanna talk about the video that I filmed earlier in this year on this same topic and the things that I said in that video were on my shopping list for 2019. I filmed that video in May, and I'll link it in the cards if I remember to. I've been absolutely horrendous at remembering to link things in the cards lately. I'm just having the most topsy-turvy and bananas month, and I've been trying to film and post more often than usual. I don't know if you guys have noticed. Mostly just because I have so much content right now that I feel like belongs in December of the no-buy year. So I've been doing a lot of work and then I've kind of been dropping a couple of balls here and there. So I'll try to remember to put that in the cards, but I'm sure you can find it. If you search my channel for what's on my actual shopping list, you'll find a video that went up in May. And so that was five months into my no buy. I was nearing the halfway mark. And I talked about about 10 things that at that moment, I was convinced that if my no buy were to end that day, I would immediately buy these things. And I pulled up the list and I'm here to tell you that none of them are still on it. None of them are on my December list, which does give me some pause in creating my December list, my current list, and I will talk more about that in the second half of the meat of this video. But I really, I'll go over them very briefly. The Kevin Aquan Neo Blush in Rose Cliff, I was totally enamored of those blushes when they released. I wanted them so, so badly. It was just one of those new releases that called to me, that seemed made for me, that I felt like I would get really good use out of. And now, at this point in my no-buy, as you know if you've already watched my video, how my no-buy year changed my makeup collection, I think of blush as being in the third category, long-term pleasures, and I think of any purchase of color cosmetics like a blush to be a real special treat, a total splurge, something that I am only going to be doing going forward with a lot of care and thought, and I just don't feel like I want that blush enough anymore for it to be worth it to grow my already big blush collection, big for me, and to spend the money, frankly, because it's a luxury product. So I just, I have no desire, no, it's just gone. Like it's gone, gone, gone from my wish list, gone from my mind, hadn't thought about it in months and months. When I pulled up this list, I was like, oh yeah, the Kevin Aquan Neo blush, gone. The Smashbox Buildable Cheek Brush. I was just convinced partway through the year that I didn't have any good blush brushes and that I didn't have any that were the shape that I wanted, the size that I wanted. I was doing a bunch of research about the best blush brushes and the ones that I thought I wanted. I found this Smashbox one that I thought I wanted. It's expensive. It's like in the $30 range, I think. And actually, just in the past couple of weeks, I, I filmed a week of strong blush check-ins video that should already be up by now. In the course of filming that, I actually was delighted by the performance of some of my blush brushes. I no longer feel like I don't have adequate blush brushes. I think that 
just being forced to use the ones I have, to use what I have, has taught me to use the ones I have better. So I think what was going on before was that I didn't know how well the ones that I already own worked. I didn't know how to use them. I wasn't skilled enough at using them because I hadn't had enough practice. What I would have done, old Hannah would have just gone out and bought a new blush brush thinking that that was the problem. But now I understand that the problem was just that I hadn't worked with the ones that I already own enough. And at this point, I'm pretty delighted with my few blush brushes. that I think they're great and I don't feel like I need another one right now. The Sunday Riley Influencer Foundation. I just really, really love Sunday Riley. I don't know if I love Sunday Riley now as much as I did before, and I'll talk about that in an upcoming skincare video, but that foundation, I just wanted it because I was intrigued by the fact that Sunday Riley was releasing a foundation, but it was an absolute blip on the screen, got terrible reviews. I haven't heard a word about it basically since it released, and I definitely don't plan to buy it. The Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide Cream. As many of you already know, I am no longer buying high-end or luxury products for night cream. I think that if for some reason I wanted to incorporate this product, it would be as a serum because I know it's pretty lightweight, but it's a polypeptide. It's a, it's a peptide product and I'm getting peptides in my routine right now from my Erin's Faces peptide sunscreen. So I don't need another peptide product in my routine, and I definitely don't want one that costs the 60 or 70 or 80 dollars that this one costs. It's just, it's not what I'm doing with skincare anymore, so I don't want to buy that. I'm not going to buy it. The Natasha Denona Star Palette. I definitely don't have this on my wish list anymore because a sweet subscriber, Wendy, sent hers to me. Most of you, I think, already know this, and I've been using it. I did a whole week of using it and reviewed it, and I talked about the experience of having wanted something for so long and then actually getting it. And as much as I love it, and I do love it, make no mistake, I'm really, really pleased to be able to use it. As much as I absolutely love it, receiving it and starting to use it was a reminder that the reality is always different from the fantasy. And I think that's because when we fantasize about really nice makeup products, we tend to be fantasizing about more than just makeup. We always kind of think that they're going to transform us into our fantasy selves, that they're going to be something more to us than just eyeshadow palettes. And they never are. It's always just eyeshadow. It's just eyeshadow. And I think that for me, the star palette represented something, some, something to do with fantasy. And now that I have it, it's just reality. It's a wonderful reality. I really, really love it. And I'm, I'm very happy that I have it. I'm very grateful. But the question I feel like here is, would it still be on my wish list if I hadn't received it as a gift? And I think the answer is no. And it's because of the price. Moving forward into next year, I just don't want to spend a lot of money on makeup, especially not into my third category, long-term pleasures. I don't want to be dropping almost $200 on an eyeshadow palette. Given my current level of income, I just don't think that there's any way in which I could justify spending that much unless I saved for it over the course of several months. And I might do that. I might buy, in fact, I'm going to get into this later in the video. There might be some big ticket items that I choose to save for over the course of several months next year and then plan for and purchase. There's a chance that I might have had the star palette on that list, like the list of things that I was considering saving up for, like one or two big ticket things that I was considering saving up for in 2019. There's a chance that it could still be on that list. I don't think that my interest in it and my passion for it would have totally died by this point in the year. It's something that I have had an enduring love affair with both before and after owning it. So yeah, there's a chance, but I definitely don't think I would have gone out and bought it in January. So it wouldn't have been on my shopping list. It would have been on my kind of wish list, my maybe list for next year. The IGK Down and Out Dirty Spray. So I am actually currently out of texturizing spray and I also was when I made this video. After I made the video, sometime after a friend gave me a bottle of that, which was really lovely, and so I did have it for a couple more months during the year, and then I recently had it in my empties. I no longer have a texturizing spray, and right now I feel like I would eventually like to fill that hole in my collection, but I'll probably buy the Moroccan oil one, because that 
is my favorite one that I've ever tried. But I don't think I'm going to rush right out and buy it in 2019 in January. It's not actually on my shopping shopping list for January because I have so many other hair products. I have a couple of sea salt sprays that I received from Jennifer and I've actually been getting along with them a lot better lately than I used to get along with sea salt sprays. It's almost like I've figured out how to incorporate them into my hair in a way that gets the results that I want. So I kind of feel like just hanging out with all of the random hair stuff that I have right now and seeing if I can make it work for me. And then the last thing on the list was L'Oreal Lash Paradise, the brown one. I really had missed having a brown mascara and a black mascara. I also received a brown L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara as a gift during the course of this year, so I have been able to use a brown mascara. And yes, I would say going forward, I will probably continue to have both a brown and a black mascara in my collection at any given time. I missed having a brown mascara enough, and I was excited enough to then get one that I, I think they are both short-term staples for me but the one that I have the one that Tara sent is still going strong so I don't have it on my shopping list it's not something that I'm going to need to buy as soon as my no buy is over so that's it those are all the things that I thought I wanted to buy in May I didn't buy any of them because the no buy is lasting until the 31st at midnight and I have a new list a really different list. It's a much more practical list. There are a couple of things on this list that I probably won't, again, rush out and buy right away because I'm doing fine. That's one of the things that the no buy has taught me. There's no need to panic. Even though both of my pairs of sneakers are absolutely disgusting and ill-fitting at this point because I've worn them both to shreds, there's no need to panic. I don't need to buy sneakers on January 1st. I am fine. I can wear one of my pairs of yucky old sneakers on the plane to go home for the holidays, walking around the North Carolina mountains. I can wear those yucky old sneakers. I'm fine. It's fine. And I feel that way about everything on this list. I am planning to buy most of these things pretty soon in January or February, like pretty early in the year, but I don't feel like I'm going to place a giant order on January 1st at 12.01 and be excited that all of these things are arriving and feel like I'm saved from having to live without them. It's just, it's just not like that. I could go another month. I could go two. I could go three. You know, at some point I would start getting like a little bit discouraged about the fact that I wasn't able to replace my sneakers and I'm looking forward to having some new sneakers because I think it will be healthier for my feet and just better all around, more comfortable. But the sense of urgency with which I would say I even wanted, for example, the Kevin Aquan blush, I don't have that feeling about any of the things on this list. I just don't feel like I'm that kind of shopper anymore. And I've learned that when I do have that feeling, that I need to wait it out. I no longer want to buy things based on that feeling because I've learned this year that it always fades and it fades whether or not you buy the thing. So I'd rather wait it out, have it fade, and then really make a wise decision, a, a less fraught decision about whether I would like to bring that thing into my life. So. That's kind of how I feel about these things. I feel like they are decisions that aren't fraught, they're clear, they're things that I've had the whole year to decide that I actually wanna buy in early 2019. And I have it separated into, I think, makeup stuff, clothing closet stuff, homewares, and then at the end there are some kind of wish list items, things that I want, but I still need to think about whether or not I'm gonna buy them kind of maybes. There's like a maybe section. So the first thing on the makeup list is the brow pencil. I am really tired of using my Anastasia Dip Brow. The color is too warm for me. It makes my brows look kind of orange. I've been sticking it out either using that or just dyeing my brows or using eyeshadow for months and months and months now because the brow pencils with which I started the year kicked the bucket long ago. And I really miss having a brow pencil in a good ashy color that matches the cool undertone that I like for my brows. 
but I'm not going to go out buying an Anastasia one, which were the brow pencils of choice for me at the beginning of the year. I'm going to look for a drugstore dupe. And so I might end up buying a couple different ones to find the right one. And let me know if you have any suggestions. I'm basically looking for a drugstore priced dupe to the ABH Brow Wiz or something of that kind. So the other thing that I may or may not buy in January but that I'm on the hunt for is a drugstore priced brow gel that has a really really strong hold. A really 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 strong hold. My Givenchy gel isn't panned yet but it's kind of getting down there. Uh, I would say it's maybe a third if not a quarter of the way full and so I'm gonna start looking around for something that works just as well or well enough for me that costs a fraction of what that one costs. Again, if you know of one that has to have a really strong hold, the ColourPop ones don't work for me, Boy Brow doesn't work for me, although that's not inexpensive. The, those waxy ones don't work for me, my brows just go right back to their weird shape. I need one that is like glue and I don't mind if it's crunchy. So let me know. And that is something that I might start trying in January or February. Before that one runs out, I might try one try a drugstore one, see if it works, because I would like to have found one that works well by the time that one runs out. And again, I'm not going to buy like 50 of them. I'm going to do a lot of research and then optimistically buy one. And if it doesn't work out, I'll continue my research and maybe try one more. I'm not going to go out and like buy five and try to find the best one that way. I'm going to go about it carefully and slowly and in good time so that I have a buffer, which is the, the end of my Givenchy one. But that's something that I'm guessing that I'll buy next year. It's on my shopping list. Another thing that's squarely at the top of my list is a few magnetic palettes for depotting. I am just itching to depot my Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette, my Juvia's Place palettes that Angelica sent me, my Alamar palette that Courtney sent, and I also want to declutter my singles, the ones that I currently have, and just reorganize them. So I feel like I need a smaller palette, a smaller magnetic palette for travel or for taking when I leave the house. Like I would like to have one that I can kind of curate, like a rotating six pan palette that I can recurate every once in a while. I just think that would be so fun. And right now I don't have any small magnetic palettes, I only have big ones. And then I'd like to have just enough room for all of the singles once I depot those palettes. The reason I want to depot them is that those are palettes either that don't inspire me visually or in which I feel like there are a lot of colors that I'm never going to use. And I also want to buy a magnetic palette or two so that I can put all of my discarded singles in it and, and give it away. Like I would like to make a magnetic palette of my decluttered singles and give them to a friend or a family member or something like that. So this kind of depotting and decluttering project is something I've been itching to do, frankly, since January. And I haven't been able to do it because I haven't had the array of magnetic palettes that I'll need to complete that project. So that's something that I'm probably going to buy pretty, pretty early in the year next year. Okay, and then the only real indulgence, the only splurge, the only category three product that is actually squarely on my list that I really think that I will buy in January is the Twiggy Nude. What I was calling the porn star nude in one of my videos, but one of you called it a Twiggy Nude and I think that's actually a much better name. You know that really 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 pale concealer lips nude. I got a ton of suggestions from you guys. I'm kind of eyeing Kim KW by Charlotte Tilbury. I've never tried a Charlotte Tilbury lipstick so that would kind of be two birds with one stone. I've been eyeing some of the ones by Bite because I really like their formula. I've been eyeing a couple of different ones. I'm not going to buy more than one. I'm going to buy one and I'm going to try to test it in store. I'm going to do some more research and make a decision, but I just want that and feel like I would wear it all the time. I've been creating that look on my lips all the time using my MAC chromographic pencil in, cre in a cream color to lighten my lip colors but it's it's kind of dry and chalky it's not really great for the lips and so I've been enjoying the look but not the texture of the lip that I've been able to create and I feel like it's just been long enough that I've been lusting for that color that kind of lip and I also feel like it would go into really regular rotation 
it's something that I want to wear a lot and that I do think that I would get good value out of, relatively good value for me. I know that I said going forward I wasn't going to be thinking about value for money when it comes to color cosmetics, but I think what I mean is that I don't fear that it would just get swallowed up into my collection of lippies and that I would never reach for it or that I would forget about it because it's been months now that I've been like reaching for this phantom lipstick that I don't have and then using other products to create the same effect but still wishing for that actual product. So it's like I have a spot for it right here and I'm ready to fill that spot. That's like my main indulgence. That's like the thing that I'm excited to indulge in in 2019. I think that's my reward, which is so amazing because I had been saying for a long time that if I made it through the no buy year, I would buy myself the Natasha Denona Star Palette, which is like $170. And now I'm sitting here telling you that when I make it through my no buy year, I think the thing I'm going to buy to reward myself is a lipstick. All right, let's move on to closet items. I was talking about my sneakers before. I entered the year with two pairs of pretty new sneakers. I, I actually kind of stocked up. I bought them both towards the end of December because I wear fashion sneakers almost every day. So one is a pair of kind of sleek, laceless, white Nikes. They're very glove-like on the foot. They look cute with dresses and stuff, which is kind of hard to find a sneaker like that, especially for me, because I'm quite tall. I'm like a big person. I'm, I'm like a tall, imposing person, if you see me in real life. I don't know, maybe I'm imposing on the screen too, but those sneakers make so much sense in my wardrobe. I really love them. I wore them probably more than, well, I don't know. I maybe wore them equally with my other sneakers, but I just wore them, th those two pairs of sneakers more than anything. The other pair is a pair of lace-up, also Nikes, a little chunkier with kind of a coppery orange hair on hide finish. It's like that calf hair finish. Editorial hair on hide is like my favorite thing. Didn't I already say editorial ruffles were my favorite thing? Those are two of my favorite things in fashion. So they're both, like I said before, in pieces and I just, I need a new pair of sneakers. There's no two ways about it. I'm not relishing having to buy them. I'm going to look on eBay. I don't want to spend a lot of money. I think I spent $100 on each of those two pairs. And at this point, at the end of my no buy year, spending $100 on sneakers feels like kind of a blow. I don't want to spend that much. I want to find them in a secondhand shop or on eBay or something. So I'll be looking around or, or in a sale. Like I'll be scouting around for a good pair of sneakers, a good pair of fashion sneakers that will pair well with all of my outfits that I can wear to walk to work. Okay, warm weather clothes. This isn't something that I'm going to buy in January, but it's on my list because I learned that I just don't have very many very, very warm weather clothes, so I thought it was worth bringing up in this video. When we're in transitional weather or cool weather like now, I have a lot of variety in my wardrobe, even after decluttering it and getting rid of almost 50% of what I had. But when it comes to super, super hot weather, like shorts and a linen tank top kind of weather, there isn't a lot of variety in my wardrobe. And so I'm going to prepare myself to have to make some clothing investments in 2019 when it gets super hot again. So that's on the list. And I think I need one more pair of basic pants, pants that go with all my tops. I think that I just have one fewer than would be good for me. And that's something that I'm pretty eager to invest in. I do have a pair on my Christmas wish list, but if nobody buys them for me for Christmas, I could see myself buying them for myself in January, especially if they go on sale after Christmas. Again, I'm fine right now. I'm fine with the pants I have, but weeding out my closet and really taking a good look at what I have that I love and then wearing my edited closet for the last several months of the year, I've detected a hole and there's a hole in my pants wardrobe and it's just my kind of everyday wearable comfortable pants that look kind of drapey and chic and go with everything and that I can wear to walk to work without ruining them. Just, I think I might have three pairs of pants in that category right now. Like I'm kind of wearing the three, the same three pairs of pants all the time, which is fine with me because they are 
innocuous enough that they kind of go with everything and I don't feel like I'm always wearing exactly the same thing and I can really mix stuff with my tops but I think that I would just feel like a little more relaxed and have a little more breadth with four. Okay, so I have a couple of home items. Our oven mitts are in absolute tatters. They're like burned all over. They're disgusting. They're gross on the inside from like damp pans going in there. We just have two oven mitts. We have like a set of two nice big beefy quilted oven mitts that I think we got at Ikea and it's time for them to be replaced and it's the kind of thing I would have replaced them months ago if I hadn't been on a no-buy. It's the kind of thing that Joe doesn't really think about like he wouldn't he wouldn't have replaced them of his own accord even though he also uses them and so I'm gonna replace them. I'm gonna replace them in January. They're squarely on the list. We just need a new pair of oven mitts. There's something that we need for our home for Sadie, which is a little perch that clips onto a windowsill, like a little sitting perch. We have two bar height stools that pull up to a chopping block that we have, like a, a butcher block that that's an island. That's what it is. It's like a kitchen island, a movable kitchen island. We, we brought it, we put it, we own it, we put it into the house, but it's part of the kitchen. And one of the chairs is permanently pressed up against the windowsill so that Sadie can sit and look out onto our sidewalk and watch people go by during the day. So in effect now we only have one chair because one chair is permanently Sadie's chair and it would be really nice to have both of our chairs back. So I have for months been wanting to get one of those little clip-on perches from Amazon. I think they're only like $30. I think I remembered researching them at some point during the year and learning that they aren't exorbitantly expensive. There are some budget options for that kind of thing. So that's on my list. I think little Sadie needs a perch and I think we need our chair back. And so that's something that I'm, I'm kind of, I'll be relieved when I'm allowed to buy stuff again so that I can buy that because it just, it's, it's like a no brainer. We've needed it for so long and I've even talked to Joe about it. I was kind of hoping he would get it in his brain to research and buy one, but he didn't. And it's just, it's time. It's been time. We just need it for the infrastructure of our house, if that makes sense. And then I put plants on the list of homewares, but plants in moderation. Because I, before, was a compulsive buyer of houseplants. I was buying houseplants to fill a hole in my soul. <laughs> like, I was buying houseplants because I loved buying things, and I loved houseplants. And I think I will buy one or two houseplants to replace one or two houseplants that have perished over the course of the year. But this time I'm going to buy them because I love houseplants and not because I love shopping. I'm not going to be buying the houseplants at lunch during a hard day at work to try to distract myself from the fact that I don't want to go back and finish my work. I'm not going to buy the houseplants as a treat to up my mood. I'm going to think about which plants might work for one or two spots that have lost plants or one or two spots that could have used plants but that I didn't have plants in before. And then I'm gonna make a couple of well-chosen purchases. I'm not gonna make plant buying a regular habit like it was before. Okay, so that's it for the things that I think that I will buy. I can't be absolutely sure, but I'm just saying like this is my list. Like I have a little list here to remind myself of things that I think I'll shop for that I'm sort of shopping for but I don't know I'm fine without these things I've been fine without all of them so it might take me until March or April to get around to buying magnetic palettes for depotting I don't feel eager to buy things right now I don't feel eager to spend money so this is just my kind of estimate my guess of what's on my shopping list and again like I said I don't have that frantic desire for any of these things the way that I felt for the things that I put on my list back in May so I have a last little the maybe section here and I'll just kind of read them off really quickly. These are things that would be indulgences, would be treats, but that right now I feel like I really, really want and I'm tempted to buy. So the first one is some duochrome singles from indie brands. I'm really interested in trying more indie brands. I'm still obsessed with duochromes. I'm a sucker for duochromes. I want some more duochrome shadows in my collection and I could just see myself going onto an indie brand's website one evening and picking a little handful of duochrome shadows and just having an infusion of excitement into my collection of eyeshadow singles. I don't think I'll do it right away, like it doesn't, again, it doesn't feel urgent. That's just something that I've kind of been planning to do in 2019 and I, I don't know 
when it will happen and it might be in January or February. I would really like to try some duochrome singles from indie brands. The other thing that's on my desires list is the travel spray of By the Fireplace, the replica perfume that I had a little sample size of. I just can't get it off my mind and they have a little travel spray at Sephora for $25 which I do feel like would be worth it to me to have that cozy scent during the relatively cold winter months in Los Angeles. That's just something that would be such a pure pleasure for me and I think would be money that I wouldn't regret spending. So that's on my maybes list. I'm starting to feel like I might like one or two more pairs of editorial earrings. I'm really into kind of big chunky editorial earrings. Sometimes I wear them in my videos and I almost always wear them when I go out dancing. And the ones I've had, the ones I have in rotation, I probably have four or five pairs that are like my go-to's. And I just have gone through them and through them and through them so many times this year. I feel like I've worn all of them in videos. I've worn all of them out dancing several times over. I've mixed and matched. I've worn all of them with the same outfits a bunch of times. And I still love them and I'll still continue to wear them. But just over the past month or two, I've gotten to the point where when I go in to select my earrings, if I'm going to an event to which I want to wear earrings, I, I feel like the pickings are a little bit slim and I just would like a little more selection. It's just an area of my wardrobe in which I would like a little more diversity. So I have my eye on a couple of pairs from J. Crew. I'll throw them off on the screen real quick in case you guys are interested. There's this Lucite pair that's really stunning, and there's a little pair of red studs. There's a big tortoiseshell pair from um, a more Verit that I really like and I actually have all of them on my Christmas wish list so maybe I'll get one of those as a gift but if not I could see myself picking one to treat myself to next year. The Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette I still haven't forgotten it. I still want it. It's still on my list. I don't know if I can bring myself to spend the money. I don't know if I can bring myself to add it into a collection that I feel like is pretty overstuffed already. I'm not sure I'm gonna buy it, but it just, it is on my list. It's on my shopping list. It's on my maybe list. And I'm continuing to wait it out. I'm like waiting out my feelings and I'm gonna wait to see if I forget about it the way I did the Kevin Aquan blush, or if I keep thinking about it as my dream the way I did the Natasha Denona star palette. Only time will tell, but for now, it's still on the list. And the last thing that's on my list is a very, very maybe, maybe. It's it's something that would be a big ticket item that I would have to save for. There's hair all, there's cat hair everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. Sadie? Anyway, that is an editorial bag. I have just been lusting after a beautiful, sculptural, possibly colorful, editorial handbag and I have my eye on a couple. There's this brand called Polen Paris that makes these gorgeous bags. There's another one, I can't remember the... I'll, I'll put pictures up on the screen. I'll like flash some pictures up on the screen of the bags that I have on my wish list. There's one from Claire V that's like green hair on hide again and I just, I do feel like there's a hole in my handbag wardrobe. I don't have a medium to small statement bag that I can take when we go out at night, for example. And it's something I've been thinking about now for months. I'm not gonna buy a designer bag. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about investing in like a Celine bag for thousands of dollars. It's not like that. I'm talking about maybe spending some hundreds of dollars. Uh, I think the Polen one is like $400, which is really a lot. Like I, I'm not gonna run out and buy that in January. It's not like that. I'm talking about potentially deciding to save and sock away a certain amount of money every month for something like six months of the year in order to buy that bag in July. You know, like not buying almost anything else that I want to buy so that I can buy that one thing. It's something I've been thinking about for next year. I've been thinking about the practice of saving my money up to buy one nice thing instead of spending my money all the time on a bunch of little things. And what that would do for me, for my psychology, what that would mean on my channel, right? Because it would mean essentially buying much, much, much less or almost maintaining a no buy for a long time until I could buy that one thing, until I felt like I could. 
I'm not sure I'll do it. I'm just thinking about it. And so I have it here on the list and I thought I would share it with you for that reason. I've never been able to do that before. I've never been able to save for a big ticket item and I've never been able to buy one. I've never been in a position in life where I could buy a $400 bag ever, but I feel like I could do it now. I feel like I have the willpower. I have changed the structure of my life such that it would be possible for me. I, I know that I can do it. I know that I can do a no buy. I know that I can refrain from spending my money on little things because I've refrained this year from spending my money on anything. So it's tempting to use my new superpower in that way. And obviously I will keep you updated on whether or not I decide to do something like that in the new year. That is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you will remember to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.